So it's important to know that alienation is not normal. It's not a normal part of divorce. Uh, only 10 to 15 percent of families uh, getting divorced or even parents separating who were never married uh, go through an issue of alienation where a child refuses or resists having contact with one of the parents. So alienation is not normal. It goes with having somebody in the system, the family system, and it's typically one of the parents that is saying uh, all or nothing negative things about the other parent, is having unmanaged emotions about the other parent. So anger, uh, sadness, tears, um, resentful comments, nothing positive, 100% negative about the other parent. Um, behaviors that show that the other parent is terrible and maybe to blame for everything. And it's again, an all or nothing perspective. That kind of emotional, behavioral word communication gets absorbed by children. Um, they can't resist it. They don't have the brain power yet to sort out what to take in and what to shut out. So if one parent says, you know, the divorce was all your father's fault or all your mother's fault, then that gets absorbed the more it's repeated to the child. And as a child and family counselor for 12 years, I had children telling me, over time, at first early on, they'd say, I love my parents equally. And then as a divorce, a high conflict divorce progressed, they'd start saying, I really, I really don't like being with my mother. My father gets me. He's really good at things that are important to me. And my mother, she just doesn't, doesn't understand. And her new husband, I won't even call him his name. Um, but it's the new stepfather. Um, he's a terrible person. And well, what does he do? Well, he's just a terrible person. Well, what does he do? Um, um, kind of searching for a reason. What's happening is they're getting a message. And I think of a specific case like this, where the father was very intrusive uh, with the boy and would quiz him, what's your, what's your stepfather doing now or your mother's new husband doing now? What's your mother doing now? Did you agree? If you ever feel abused, call me right away. And so creating this image of the mother and her new husband, the stepfather, as evil and terrible in an all or nothing manner. Now, on the other hand, the mother was told and following the instructions to not discuss the father. Don't badmouth father, don't say anything negative, don't even discuss things. And so it's like a, a political campaign where you have one person campaigning hard for office and the other person remaining silent. And the child picked up and absorbed that and eventually, you know, resisted and refused to see the mother. This could be the mother, this could be the father who's rejected, but it's this kind of behavior. What's interesting is as a therapist, before I started doing divorce cases, I did some family counseling in families where there was already alienation with both parents in the home. One of the parents belittled the other parent, put that parent down in such disparaging terms that the children started absorbing that that parent's incompetent, that parent's stupid, that parent's no good, even though that parent was in the house. And so it's a process of emotional messages, all or nothing thinking that's pounded into the children from somebody somewhere. And it's usually the other parent, could be other relatives, could be the whole team of one side of the family against the parent, grandparents, pets uh, on the other side of the family. So understand it's not something that's normal, only 10 to 15% separation divorce cases have this. I also want to say it's not normal in terms of abuse. People say, oh, well, let's say the father must have abused the child and that's why the child doesn't want to go with the father. Well, I've also done counseling in those situations and 
Children who are abused by a parent love the parent and they want to be with the parent. They just want the abuse to stop. And so it's not a normal symptom of abuse. And so that often gets argued about in court. Well, what have you done? Well, it's not what the person the child is with has done or the person the child's resisting has done. In many cases, it's what the parent the child is with is saying and doing and the emotions that they're shedding onto the child. So it has to be understood. This is something that's not normal. It's not just because there's a divorce. It's not just because there's abuse. It has to be understood. And in many of these cases, there's no abuse except for the emotional negative messages. Um, I've seen domestic violence cases where the perpetrator of domestic violence also has alienated the child against the other parent. So they're engaged in violence, they're engaged in negative messaging to the child. So the child goes with the aggressive, violent parent because they've absorbed the message that the other parent deserves to be abused, deserves to be rejected. And so it's so important to understand. It's not typical of divorce, not typical of abuse. It needs to be seen under the surface. So that's my brief message for now. Best wishes.